Hey guys, and welcome back to this new video. Today I want to take a look inside one of these 15 euro AliExpress video cameras or webcams, but with the newer feature uh, built-in screen, which yeah was uh, very intriguing in comparison to the normal webcams that are floating around everywhere. And as you can see, here's another one. I did already open it up and looked inside and dumped even the flash of it. Looked a little bit inside and I'm quite sure that this one is exactly the same internally. I mean, of course, different screen or different PCB, but same SOC, same RF hardware and so on. But let's still take a look inside. Both use the app called ICC and so far I have never really got them up and running to prevent any Chinese disturbance in my Wi-Fi. I will take a deeper look later and it looks like the app itself has quite the good certificate pinning so it's not so easy to sniff any data going over it but let's take a look later. As mentioned both are around like 15 or 10 euros on AliExpress and are motor driven so you can like rotate up and down, tilt and so on. Both have the option to call someone from the camera itself so with two buttons. This is smaller one here even has a remote control to trigger a call or to accept the call. I'm not so sure. And yeah, you can basically have a video call with someone on the other end or just like um, look around in your room when you have them online, like a normal webcam. And yeah, let's just start looking into it. First, let's just open the bottom on this bigger one and maybe make some space to not mix everything too much and zoom in a bit for you like so. So we have three screws in the bottom. It will be one cable going up from the USB-C charging port. And one thing I saw is quite nice. It's these feet are like little axes to not slip too much on the floor and yeah we can see it's just one cable going from the USB connector and okay the CC resistors are missing so no real USB-C cable will work here it's still um, functioning with USB-A to USB-C cables that just uh, a note on the side and let's also screw this away as you can see it's directly connected to the motor shaft and let's connect it again and now we can just open up the main body I have not looked into this big one until now so let's see how easy it really is but it hopefully will just pop open at some point. I do not see any other screws. So it will be most likely just any clip holding it together. And let's use the tweezer to get into it a bit more. And yeah, it's popping open with a little bit of damage, but that's that's all right. Overall, the size of this big one is really not so nice looking as the smaller one I turned down already so it's really just to take a look inside and even if there should be ever a custom firmware so it's nicer to maybe use the other one. 
Okay, so now we are in. We have this beaker glued onto the back and we can directly disconnect it to make a bit more space again. On the smaller one is really a speaker case inside of the whole case where it's connected. We have the two stepper motors on these two positions. Here we can see the Wi-Fi antenna, we can see the screen connector, we can see these two wires going to the two buttons, so they will most likely be um, connected via resistors, so an analog input will see what resistor value is connected, depending on what button you press, so it's working by just two wires. And let's also open the rest. And you can also disconnect the motors, like so. And this was the power supply, which we could maybe just get through. Let's disconnect it once more. Also the yeah, buttons. And we can unscrew them as well. If the focus would work. And one more. And we should be able to see a resistor at some position. And yeah. So we have like here resistor one and resistor two and capacitors next to it. So it will not have some double presses. Basically that's how the two button method work. We have some leftover stuff from maybe the speaker also. Let's also disconnect the LCD. And what else do we have? The camera board itself, which hopefully gets out, yeah, like so. We have another board on the top, which is the infrared and LED board. And let's also quickly unscrew it to take a deeper look. And yeah, it looks like these are just normal LEDs and no infrared LEDs, at least. That's how it looks from this side. Ah, okay, so it looks like these are double LEDs. Quite interesting. So one will be infrared or red maybe. So maybe you can like, based on the naming that you have like white and red LED. Never saw this one before. Interesting. Um, you have a microphone in the case which I will just leave in there. And then the main camera body and what looks like the serial number of it. And I will just share this with you. You can do something with it or not. I will never let this camera running anyway. Then let's also open up the LCD itself. Should come out easily. Yeah, so this is also quite similar to the other one. So here we have also the LCD which is glued in the front, like so. So this is looking a bit nicer, but in general, we have the same LCD, same naming on the flex cable, so same size. And also the method of using this flex cable. So we can really see it's like out of the same factory, just a different version. And if we now compare the camera boards itself, they also seem to look very similar. But as we can see, the main controller is different. This is interesting. So one is these... Ooh, G-O-K-E, so Goke GK7201 chip. And the other one has the 50V200SD1 chip. Never heard of both of them, but I will take a deeper look into it. We can also see that like 
the Wi-Fi board is rotated, but it looks to be the same. The motor driver, which is this one, and here, this one uses an ULN2803, which is just a transistor array. So not a stepper driver IC, but it's more likely just an IC to drive hardware. And the other one is a WX2206 or 8 or something. But as you can see, the connectors are really on the same position. And yeah, what we can see here. This connector is different, battery connector. Okay, so the other board is maybe prepared to also allow for battery running. I think it was not connected on the other board. And also we can see the flash memory, the SPI memory is on a different location, but that is most likely depending on what the chip needs and so on. Yeah, but in general, it looks quite similar. I will not tear it down further and I will just look into the software side of stuff the next and let's see where it will go. And to give at least some insights or hacking tips for dumping the memory, if you made it this far in this video, write it down that you know how to dump it now. Um, we want to get the content of this memory chip. This is basically like an SD card or like a USB stick. And whatever software is on it or firmware will be run from this GoKit chip or in most other devices as well, like Linux driven ones, embedded Linux devices. It basically looks the same. Sometimes it's a NUN chip, but on the smaller ones, it's this SBI flash chip, which makes it quite easy. And to dump it, I will use this Mini Pro adapter programmer flasher and such an adapter board where you can just basically put it in after desoldering it. There are also these clips to directly yeah, mount on the chip itself, but I'm not so much a friend of them because sometimes the device itself yeah, disturbs the signal, so some bytes are not the correct one as they are really. So it's the, really the best to desolder it and yeah, dump it without any connection to the main board. At some point I also made such an adapter board. It's just like a basic PCB and very cheap that way. Where most of the yeah, pinout or versions of flash chips are fitting in. If you do not have the correct adapter or spring loaded thingy to just put it in. This way it's quite easy to just desolder, solder onto such an adapter board, solder these eight connections with like these pin headers on and dump it that way. But we will use this one. And before any soldering I just take a picture of the naming of the chip because sometimes the solder flux and so on will make it not so nicely readable. In this case, I did it already. It is 25QH64 and so on. And I will just then yeah, enter it in the um, software I have to dump it. This can be different software like these TL866 programmers are quite expensive more or less. There are also the CH341 flashers or dumpers, readers, however you name them which are at like 5 euros, which will work basically the same. But since I got this one, I will of course use it. And um, yeah, we'll then select it in the software, but I will not show the software side today. I will just show the hardware way. We need a soldering iron. We need, of course, solder. And I got this yeah, basic kitchen sponge metal thing. And desoldering it is quite simple by just these three types. I am not using a hot air gun as it's enough to do it this way. I'm basically holding the PCB. I'm holding the solder soldering iron and just pre-tin everything quite a lot. Like so. So you have really like all pins on one side 
pretint, same on the other side, and you can see that it just melts everything so fast, so far, that you just have it disconnected. And now to get focus on the chip again. After that you have this solder laying around or being stuck to the pin. But to remove it we can just do a bit of drag soldering, like so. And the tension of the solder itself will drag away from the pins to remove it again. So we have like a pretty clear chip now. Let's get a tweezer to show it a bit better. Like so. And you can also see how worse the reading of the chip is now. So making a picture beforehand is just making your life easier. After that it's as simple as inserting it into the adapter and this dot. You can see there is the pin 1. And yeah, it's basically as simple as inserting. But also keep in mind that most of the time one connection is not really yeah, gripping into it. So you can jiggle around the chip itself a bit. On the programmer I have it will note which pin is not connected correctly. But on the cheap one you will not have this yeah, luxury option. So if you have, get no connection just try to wiggle it around a bit. Other than that it's really like inserting it and now dumping it on the software after connecting the programmer of course. This just to give a bit more insight. After that you can solder it in again of course. Maybe you can tweak some memory, change the password or bypass some password checking in boot. Another way is also to install a socket on the PCB where you have like a pin header and then can insert such an adapter PCB where you put the flash chip on and then you can remove it quickly, put it in the flasher, change stuff, put it in again and change the behavior of the camera in this case to further hack it, to further test it, get root access and so on. Hope you can get something out of it so far, it's not too much in depth, but let's see.